The Tektronix DM504A is my favorite TM500 series digital multimeter. It has four and a half digits precision, auto ranging, and simple front panel controls. Just five buttons to select between range, voltage, and resistance, AC or DC, current or voltage, plus an option for temperature with a P6602 probe. It has relatively fast continuity mode beeper. When you're measuring a wide range of voltages or currents, Auto ranging can be handy, but when you're measuring a number of similar voltages or currents, the time for the auto range circuit to find the correct range is annoying, so you can use this the up and down buttons to set a fixed range. Compare this with the front panel of a DM502A. It has twice as many buttons and a few more features. The 502A has rear interface connections, two resistance voltage measurement settings, and an AC volts DB function, all lacking in the DM504A, but most users won't miss these functions. The DM502A has three circuit boards, an analog board, a digital board, and a small display board. Note the 16 calibration trim pots. Internally, the DM504A is simpler than most other DMMs. The DM504A has one large circuit board with no adjustments and a small front panel display board. All control is done by an 80C31 microprocessor with 8K bytes of firmware. All range switching is done by relays controlled by the 80C31. There are no calibration adjustments because calibration constants are stored in an EEPROM, the small package next to the 80C31. The DM504A is self-calibrating. When a jumper is set to CAL mode, the firmware enters a sequence where it prompts the user to apply a series of accurately known voltages, currents, and resistances. For each one, it calculates a factor needed to make the display read the correct value and stores the factor in a 16 by 64 bit EEPROM. In normal mode, it reads the appropriate constant from the EEPROM for the particular range and function and scales the output of the A to D converter to display an accurate reading. This is necessary to achieve the basic 0.07% DC accuracy because the other various components that affect accuracy can contribute an overall variation of more than 1%. Other DMMs, like the 502A, have multiple trim pots to achieve their rated accuracy. This self-calibration method means that unless you have the correct sources, including an expensive fluke meter calibrator, you cannot recalibrate a DM504A. I've read out the firmware EEPROM and the calibration constant EEPROM and given some thought to decompiling the code and deciphering which EEPROM values correspond to which ranges. But fortunately, except for the problems noted later, DM504As rarely go out of calibration. I want to take some time to explain the difference between accuracy and precision. On its 20 volt range, the DM504A can display values from 0 to 19.999, which is 20,000 counts. It is industry practice to refer to this range as 4.5 digits, although the log base 10 of 20,000 is approximately 4.3, so the correct description would be closer to 4 and 1 third digits. The ability to display up to 20,000 counts yields a precision of one part in 20,000, or 0.005%. However, the rated DC accuracy of the DM504A is 0.07%, or about one part in 1400. The stated accuracy of the 20 volt range is 0.05% of reading plus 0.02% of full scale. Expected and actual values for several voltages in that range are shown here. At the low end of a range, the 0.02% of full scale contributes a significant inaccuracy. The nominal 0.07% accuracy is theoretically achievable only at the top of the range. However, working instruments display a much better accuracy at low voltage than the chart shows. This is probably due to good linearity in the A to D converter. The museum had three DM504As to repair, which all displayed the same two failures. AC voltage readings were several percent low, and DC voltage readings were a fraction of a percent high, well above the expected values. The DC readings would sometimes drift into nominal accuracy after a 20 to 30 minute warm up. The problem with AC voltage was traced to the capacitors around U101 
an analog device's AD737 RMS to DC converter. The two critical, the two 33 microfarad capacitors are critical to the operation of this circuit. One or both were leaky, so I replaced both on all three instruments. This cured the low AC reading problem. The problem of DC inaccuracy was much harder to find. The instrument uses a TI TL500 14 bit A to D converter with an external reference diode. I suspected the reference was changing during the warm up period. I monitored the reference voltage closely with a Keithley 2006 and a half digit DMM and found the reference voltage fed to the A to D was stable. The stability of the two integrating caps, C106 and 107, is critical to the accuracy of the A to D converter. I suspected they were affected by heat from the A to D and took this thermogram. The caps are on either side of the A to D. Replacing these caps had no effect on the failure. The input voltage follows a tortured path through the mode, switch mode switches and range relays before it reaches the precision divider made by Caddock. Suspecting the divider was drifting with temperature, I removed one from an instrument, bench tested it with the 6.5 digit Keithley, and found no problem. Running out of things to check, I looked again at the input circuit. C101 and 102 are very small capacitors that are used to compensate the input divider for high frequency response in AC modes. C102 is variable to allow for different stray capacitances in the rest of the circuit. Both of the capacitors need to withstand most of the 1000 volt maximum input. C101 is rated at 4 kilovolts. C102 is rated at 750 volts according to the parts list so it appears to be underrated. Leakage in either capacitor could cause the problem. Removing C101 did not have any effect, but disconnecting C102 did cure the problem. Fortunately, C102 has a screw mount and is easy to remove uh, without damaging it. In this simplified version of the input circuit, R100, A, B, and C are sections of the Caddock pre precision divider. A few tens of nanoamperes of leakage in these caps could increase the voltage drop across R100, B, and C by a fraction of a millivolt, enough to move the reading outside the specified accuracy. I set up an adapter board with uh, one of the failing trimmer capacitors and for reference a 5 picofarad silver mica capacitor. Silver micas are known for their um, high quality, low leakage. Now the curve tracer is set for 20 nanoamperes per division vertically and 2 volts per division horizontally and it's on the 25 volt maximum scale and this is an open circuit, no device connected. I can use the looping compensation adjustment to try to null it out that's about that's the best you can do. <clears throat> Line is reason fairly flat. Now for comparison to the bad capacitor, I'll switch to the five picofarad mica. Again, I have to readjust the looping compensation to null it out. But again, it's a it's a flat line again, indicating no DC leakage. Now I'll switch to the bad uh, trimmer capacitor. And you can see there's a definite upslope to the line. And at the right hand end, there's about, oh, between 30 and 40 nano amperes of leakage. And from this slope of this line, approximate slope, we could calculate the effective leakage resistance. But it's clearly uh, leaky when compared to the silver mica capacitor. I've observed up to 60 nanoamperes after letting the capacitor rest for a while. The leakage does decrease over time, which explains the warm-up phenomenon. The capacitor consists of a glass cylinder with a movable slug inside and a conductive coating on the outside. I broke one to see the construction in more detail. The slug appears to be silver plated and is tarnished on the exposed top. The first capacitor I removed had a couple of visible cracks and a spot of tarnish on the slug underneath the crack. The leakage could be occurring through the crack. The other two capacitors had no visible cracks but were nevertheless faulty. I don't claim to understand the failure mechanism, particularly since the electrolyte, or the uh, dielectric is glass in this case, 
but it was possibly induced by voltages over 1,000 on the input and breakdown in the capacitors. Replacing these caps could be difficult, or finding a replacement could be difficult because most of the stock of small trimmer caps at the museum are the type used in plug-ins, which do not have a high voltage rating. Leaving the trimmer out greatly reduces the AC accuracy even at 1 kHz, let alone the 10 kHz limit in the instrument specifications. If I had replaced any of the other components, I would have had to do a complete recalibration, which as I explained before is impossible due given the lack of calibration sources. That's why I gave some thought to decompiling the code and deciphering the calibration constant EEPROM. It is a current part, at least in the CMOS version, and I have a programmer that can read and reprogram it. 